All right, so boom. Hey, you guys, what's hopping? Welcome back to my channel. And today's video is gonna be um, a little more on the serious note. You guys know I love to talk to you guys and have fun, and we have a kiki. I talk to you guys about a bunch of things, but um, I don't really talk too much about social issues only because um, it's a hard world. To, to, to dive into and to talk about and it's very scary especially with, when people have different opinions of yours etc etc but today I just wanted to talk some, about something that really like that I really feel like I need to talk about I never really feel the need to talk about things socially or civil or civilly if that's a word um until like this whole situation happened you obviously know y'all know america is in flames right now like girl like the girls are fighting it's a whole bunch of stuff with the murder not the passing but the murder of george floyd and the cop who killed him the murderer who killed him um the world has literally have just been it, it, we're tired we're over it people of color are over it and you know, I'm gonna go more to depth about like the whole looting and 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 um the riots and stuff like that. But the basis I really wanted this video to be was how my own community, the Afro Latino community, I have a lot of Afro Latino followers slash um people that I'm following and influencers, and it's really crickets. It's really crickets. Afro Latinos don't feel the need to post whenever something happens to an African-American and or when a tragedy happens in the African-American community. I just woke up really mad at my community today because I just thought like, you know, as Afro-Latinos, we know that we are black. You know, we may not be African-American, but we definitely are black. And we always want to tell black people that we're a part of their, their narrative as far as where they come from. But only when we want to wear box braids, only when we want to say the n-word, only when we want to, you know, I don't know, wear certain clothes, um, uh, have certain accents, you know, when whenever we talk that is predominantly an African-American accent or a down south accent or etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That's when Afro-Latinos are really passionate about being accepted in the black community. But when s tragedies happen, I found, especially today, because this is literally the day after, but I'm recording this the day after George Floyd's death. And I see my community not making a sound, not saying nothing. You know, they, 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 they may say a little here or there, but they don't feel, they, I personally feel like as in general in the Afro-Latino community, they're not feeling it. And if you want to, if you want to, I don't want to say if you want to say the N-word because Afro-Latinos are black people and I don't want to make this video about how Afro-Latinos aren't black. I want to make this video about Afro-Latinos recognizing that when something happens to an African-American person, it happens to us. The same way how you should be irate if you see a Spanish woman or somebody who looks like me. Actually, let me correct that. Hispanic. The same way how you should feel away when you see a Hispanic person on the floor you should feel the same way for your black brother and sister because they are you too and we always want to preach that when we want to wear box braids but we don't want to preach it when we see somebody on the floor who literally lost their life i just can't wrap my head around it i can't wrap my head around why afro latinos want to be accepted by the african-american community as black people that they are but also not act like these situations don't affect them. Because in, in reality of the situation in America, it does affect you. And just because you think you speak a different language or look a little different or your skin is a little lighter, it's still gonna affect you. You're still a minority. I don't know, I, I, I kinda contemplated on doing this video because I just feel like my thoughts are all over the place. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I went on live earlier and I talked about like, you know, well, what are some of the points that I should make? Um, you know, what certain things that you guys want to hear me talk about? One of the things that I'm not going to talk about that people want me to talk about is colorism. And I just feel like for me, um, I look like this, meaning, you know, I have lighter skin. Um, I have 3C, 3B hair. Um, 
you know, I can't really speak on color, even though I feel it and I see you. I see all my brothers and sisters who are going through colorist situations, who didn't get the job because of their skin color, who 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 aren't getting the same opportunities because how they look or where they come from. I see y'all, but I feel like it's not my place because I look like this. And um, I have to be mindful of that. Um, I But I do feel it though, but I just feel like, you know, it becomes very subjective when I start talking about colorism, when I personally really have an experience. I mean, I, I've experienced being Dominican and, and that kind of segregation, but I haven't really experienced colorism as far as like, you know, African booty scratcher, like, da -da -da, like you know, jokes like that in school. Like, you know, so I just feel like that's not my place to talk. So that's one thing that I'm not gonna make this video about, just a little disclaimer. Um, we already like, I don't know how many minutes into the video, but um, I feel like colorist issues, I can give my opinion about it as far as, you know, being a Dominican light-skinned man, but I can't really talk about experiences. And this is actually a conversation that I was having with a good friend of mine, her name is Anaya Ivy, and she's also Afro-Latina as well. And she was basically telling me how she feels like women of color, um, always take on the experience so so be in mind have an open mind with this okay i'm gonna get to a good point after this um she was basically saying how she doesn't like how women of color always take other people's experiences as theirs so if a black woman who's never experienced colorism is doing good she has a good job she has she does good in school she's dark skin or brown skin um but she's never experienced that but she sees another woman experience it um and i was basically saying like she can't understand why um people take on other people's um you know injustices as their own like they feel so strongly so my rebuttal to that was basically um girl you can't say that because you know if i see somebody who looks like me experience some type of injustice i can't help but feel that like i'm gonna take that on my own you know what i'm saying because that's just how i feel just because i didn't go through it doesn't mean like it takes away from how i feel she basically gave me clarity in what she was saying as far as like but justin you don't understand like there's nothing like going through the experience you cannot see somebody going through a colorist situation and act like you know versus actually going through the experience so i i kind of resonated with that and i was like wow you know that's so true even though you see it happening to other people it even though you could feel it and empathize with it it's nothing like going through it and having that experience with it you know we was just having that conversation and that's why i feel like in this video i don't want to really talk about colorist issues as far as like you know the African Americans who are light skin versus the African Americans who are dark skin because I'm Afro Latino and that's also something that's totally different. Um, but I do want to talk about how you know these celebrities they love to and, and I'm gonna say appreciate again. It's not appropriation because I do know that Hispanic people are black. Santeria, the stuff that you know most Spanish people practice as far as like religion and stuff like that, that all comes from the from the motherland of Africa. We all have Spanish people have roots to Africa the same way how a Trinidadian has roots to Africa. The same way how a a, a, a Haitian has roots to Africa. So back to my point is these celebrities who appreciate these 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 predominantly African American um, cultures and and um, you know just ways of life and, and and the way they talk, the way they dress, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, I feel like it's so disrespectful, so socially irresponsible to not be as passionate as you are when you want to appreciate a culture. The same way how you're passionate about you know hairstyles and and, and, and nails and this and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, all of that. You need to be as passionate as when we go through issues as a community, as when you see a black man on the floor dying. How can you not feel so connected to that? I don't understand that, but in the same breath, say that you're Afro-Latino. How can you not? How can you not? I don't understand. Like, maybe because it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a visual, physical thing that you see somebody who doesn't look like you. Maybe it's that, but you need to understand if you're Afro-Latino and you want to claim that you're Afro-Latino, you have to understand it in all shades. You need to stand in it in all shades, which means people who might not be Spanish, excuse me, people who might not be Hispanic, but are African-American or Black or Caribbean or whatever, they are us. 
I feel like, um, you know, a lot of Afro-Latinos, they use their afro Latinoism, I guess, for lack of a better term, um, for convenience. Like I said, to say the N-word, to wear certain hairstyles, to talk a certain way, to, to, to pull out certain contents. It's a very convenient thing to be like, oh, well, I'm black too, but I'm not. But I am, but I'm not. And you have to stand in it, in the indifferent, in the good, in the bad. If you're going to only claim it when it's convenient for you or when you want to wear a fucking hairstyle, then bitch... Bitch, you should get the bashing that you're gonna get on Twitter and et cetera, et cetera about appropriating. And then that's when it becomes appropriation. Y'all, please do not mind the ice cream truck. I am so sorry for that. I live in New York. And I don't know why the ice Mr. Frosty is out right now, but just please. Listen to me. Listen to me. Afro Latinos, we're already a community that people don't understand. And we're trying to, you know, reclaim us recognizing that we do come from the motherland of Africa. We do have African roots close close African roots, the same way how any other Caribbean country who has predominantly brown skin people in it, Saint Dominicans, um, you know, Haitians, da -da -da -da, all of that. Um, so we're already a community that's easy to um, separate because we speak Spanish or because we have people in our um, culture or, you know, we have, you know, people who are Dominican who look like me and it's easy for people to say, no, but you're white. Oh no, but you're Spanish. Oh no, but you're this, you're that. It's already easy for people to make that segregation. But when you do things like ignore the issues that are going on in, in the black community and appropriate the same community, that makes it even easier for them. So as Afro-Latinos, we need to start taking, you know, accountability of us not recognizing social issues in the black community. We, I'm taking that responsibility right now. I feel like my community is only using it right now for self-gain and it makes me so upset because we are already so, so isolated from the black community. Afro-Latino influencers, if you're watching this, start speaking up on black lives matter because black black lives matter for you too you you probably have a grandfather who's i mean no but that's the tea though like my father he's way darker than me he's a brown skin man my mother's like a little lighter than him she's like darker than me my mother's more red i'll show you guys <laughs> in a video um so you know i have brown skin family members and it's like these what if that was your grandma but what because she don't speak spanish you don't feel that like you don't how you don't feel that like you know what if that was your grandmother on the floor that what if that was your you know somebody that you're related to who has brown skin on the floor that's what i'm saying as far as this aspect of the video like just just start speaking up like these issues are yours because they are just because you speak a little different language and you do a little this and a little sauce of this that doesn't make you exempt okay this this matters to you too. Another thing I, I want to talk about is people canceling people canceling our allies. So basically in specifics what I'm talking about is a very good friend of mine, Tariq Ali, he was basically under heat for, you know, whatever he said some things on Twitter a couple years ago when he was going through, you know, his own battle and his own discovery of self-love and things like that and i just want to say I, I i don't want to make excuses for his tweets and you know he that's his issue you know what i'm saying he's dealing with that that's that on that but i will say though in defense to him is the Tariq i know today is literally cares so much about his community the things that they go through he literally feels so passionate about it and i'm gonna tell y'all a little quick story real quick i don't know if you're gonna be mad at me for this but i'm just gonna say this real story real quick Tariq, i'm sorry if you mad at me okay for this story but you know i just the point i want to make in all of this is just not Tariq's situation but we can't we're so quick to cancel allies of ours we do all this black lives matter protests we do all these you know advocacy for black lives matter and, and and for racists to understand what that how they feel is wrong for conservatives to understand that you know their mindset isn't a progressive one you know we need we do all of these things but we're so quick to shut out people when they when they realize that they've done wrong or when they apologize or are people from our own community who made their own mistakes we cannot be hypocrites in that sense of wanting people to understand but when people understand and make progressive changes to themselves we shut them out we cannot be in that hypocrisy like that that's what that's what the white man wants us to do battle within ourselves they want us to to not be 
you know, cohesive and they want us to be at odds with each other. We need to stop doing it. And this is the reason why I want to say this little quick story real quick about Tariq. So long story short, boom. So Tariq actually had a whole thing at an event in New York City during Pride. And it was basically, you know, bringing um, LGBT youth together or people of our age together. Um, you know, just something positive for the community, you know, fun, lit, drinks, dance, blah, 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 blah. It was at this club. Um, whatever the case may be so you know i'm like sure i'll come you know i had a couple of events that that um week too but i was able to make it to tariq's and we go and you know it's really cool it was like love in a room like we had people coming up to us telling us that we they love our videos you know gay youth which i literally appreciate so much because you know as you guys know i get you know my own little da 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 from the gay girls all the time whatever but you know so it was really cool it was that on that long story short and i'm really gonna make it a long story short because i actually could go into detail about it but long story short a fight breaks out and that's literally the long story short like these boys jumped this boy i'm not even gonna go into that you know it was a big brawl and i'm inside and Tariq is outside and he comes to me and he's like yo like da 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 is fighting like blah 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 i'm like what so i run outside we was just like conf i was confused i personally was confused Tariq seen what happened but i was confused and i'm like what is going on da -da -da. supposedly these this group of boys jumped this other boy da -da -da -da, whatever the case may be Tariq was so hurt y'all don't even understand like how hurt he was like he was like crying saying that he doesn't understand why the community has to be like this and y'all know i'm very brooklyn thorough in those kind of situations like i'm very like girl let's go like like we out like whatever he was crying and he's like but why do i do things for the community like this is what is wrong with the community like our minorities we always fighting and then lgbt like he he really felt really really hard really hard for his community to the point that he went up the block and started talking to the boys who jumped the boy. And I'm like, Tariq, let's go. Because, like, this is not no... Because not for nothing, like, on some New York shit, like... People don't care about shit like that. Like, he would have got his shit rocked or, like, you know... Or it could have been an argument. It could have got real bad. But he's sitting there trying to play mediator. Like, Tariq is that kind of, like, fighter where if he feels something is right or wrong, he's going to try to, like make amends and that's what he really was a, a a freedom fighter that day like he was just talking to these boys but why you gotta understand no you can't let people get you out of the character literally and i'm talking about like real nigga shit like niggas was fighting -ra -ra -ra. and he's like and and he in the middle of it like low-key being a karen I'm, i i say that for jokes sis i say that for jokes but literally like saying like no but you can't do that but you gotta understand but da -da -da -da. like i get that you can't let people get you out of character and i'm like girl let's go girl girl is not giving that like you know it's not giving that but that day really made me realize that like you know this boy really takes things you know he, he goes to bat for it you know it's a difference between people um conveniently saying things for the gain of support of other people versus actually being in the fire and being like yo girl like no like i really feel like i need to like i need to talk to these people he didn't know them nothing he didn't know these people but he just felt the need to talk to them and, 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 and express why they shouldn't be fighting in the street and and stuff like that and you know that really like like i was really like you know proud of my friend you know i was like oh my god i love that even though i was the one that's like girl like let's go because i know how shit get ugly real quick and so kind of isn't from that world we even stood this is a whole story i'm just saying like little bits and pieces but um we even stood like maybe two hours that day looking for the other boy who got jumped we was like asking the cops like if they seen any uh, a guy we stood in dunkin donuts waiting for him like waiting by his car we walked around the whole bronx looking for this boy like you know and it's because we we both really felt like bad you know what I'm saying? Like, we felt like we needed, we, us with an influence, we felt like we needed to do something. Even though I was trying to get Tariq to leave, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, you know, that's that on that. That's because that's my New York experience. But, you know, I, I kind of took that on too. And I was like, yo, like, you know, I really do feel like, you know, 
like this shit is wrong as and and I preach it so much on my channel about like LGBT people just quick to shutting out their own and and, and people being jealous and a New York girl's always wanting to fight and it, it, but I guess I say it in a in a very bangy cunt way like a very like girl like the girls always want to like you know I very I say it very like that um so maybe you know maybe my delivery needs to be a little better but um. The feeling is still the same. And the point I want to make in saying all that is that we need to stop canceling people who are really, really for us. And I know it's hard for you guys to understand that because, you know, maybe if I didn't know him or, you know, we don't know people who are quote unquote canceled and, and, and go through these old tweet situations. It's kind of hard for us to believe, but it shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be. Um, I feel like authenticity is always resonated through camera. I really do believe that. Like, I feel like I'm very empathetic in that sense of I know when a bitch is being real. Like, you know what I'm saying? No matter what the circumstances is. And then another thing is, like, y'all quick to cancel our black creators, but y'all not quick to cancel, like, you know, and there's no shade to nobody, like, you know, but um, that Landon boy who literally, I'm gonna say appreciate because I find him funny and, you know, I don't think he's, I mean, he could be appropriating. That's subjective. Okay, that's subjective. But if you want to use appropriating, girl, that's none of my business. Okay, because I understand. The the boy who, like, you know, wears the crazy fashion overfits and acts like, you know, a black woman, you know, a, a, a stereotypical black, no, not even stereotypical because the new stereotype is black women are doctors, black women, it's just a whole, like, I can't even get into, like, to begin to how to explain how I feel, like, it's just so many thoughts, but for lack of, be of a better term, and please hear me with an open mind, I'm gonna say stereotypical woman. The stereotypical black woman, you know, the ghetto girl, I'm gonna just say the ghetto girl, yeah, <laughs> um, who acts like the ghetto girl, who's you know, more than likely black and, you know, he puts on this accent, and he acts like this girl and he's get he's gotten a bag for it. And, you know, we don't cancel him. We don't say nothing to him when he, when his tweets was brought up, you know? And it's like, why is that? Is that a self-hate thing? Like, do we not want to see our black brothers and sisters win? Or is that like a... I don't know. I don't know what it is. It, it, for me, it's a self-hate thing. We don't want to see the next person who looks like us, who comes from the same place as us, who's doing the same things as us, do better than us. And that's only hurting us in the long run. Because the same doors that you may see one person open, you don't know what door that that may trickle down for to get you in the door. You get what I'm saying? So stop canceling our black creators, people who are for us. We need to stop doing that. We need to start accepting that our black brothers and sisters when they're wrong, our Afro-Latino brothers and sisters when they're wrong. We just need to be more of with love. You, you don't, Do you see Jewish people fighting in the street? Do you see Jewish people bashing each other online? They're a little scary though. They're like a little culty to me. But anyway, but you know what I'm saying? Like, the white man wants to see us at odds with each other. They want to separate us because in numbers, we are so strong that we don't even realize it. If Afro-Latinos, um, Trinidadians, Haitians, blah, 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 blah. If all of us from all over the world came together, we would be so scary. And this is literally what people need to understand. Like, this is a white man's game. It's really chess, not checkers. So, please, y'all, please just be more open-minded. Another thing is, I don't know who this boy is, but supposedly some boy, I don't know, he had, like, a verified Twitter account. I don't know who the fuck he is. But he, at a time like this, He's talking about, and this goes back to, you know, black people canceling, black creators, etc., etc. He's talking about stop putting things on black, on white cops because there's so much black on black crime. 90% of black on black. I don't want to misquote him, so I don't know if he said like a percentage number or whatever, but he basically said that we need to stop acting like, you know, black on black crime isn't a thing. How socially irresponsible that you could get canceled for. For you to be so ignorant in that sense to know that a cop just killed a black man for no reason. To say that we need to stop acting like there's not black on black crime. What are you really trying to say? Are you really trying to say all lives matter? Are you really trying to say that we need to leave we white people alone? That as a community that we're the problem? What are you really trying to say in saying it? That's what I want to know because that doesn't make sense to me how that correlates with a white man murdering a black man. It's a difference between acknowledging problems in a community. 
at the right time in the right place. Not when the country is dealing with a, a white cop who killed a black man. It's not the time for that. It's not the time to talk about that. We don't care about that right now. We need to stand together right now. Not fight what the fuck was that message for i don't even get that like i really don't get that y'all think if black men in america were killing white men at a rapid pace like we're seeing with police murderings not police brutality okay regularize saying police murderings okay this is what i want y'all to take from my video too if 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 the tables were turned and black men were known for being murderers to white men black police officers do you think for one minute a white person would turn around and say, well, you know, the problem with our community is, are you crazy? Another thing people wanted me to talk about was the riots in um, Minnesota and if I feel like that's a valid, um, you know, way to go about getting our point across and I think so. I think so. I don't think... Now, I'm not telling people to go out and start bugging out. You know what I'm saying? But people are tired of losing their fellow brothers and sisters. Um, Target will be alright, okay? If a Target burning down and people stealing from a Target offends you more than a white murderer cop killing a black innocent man on the floor... You have issues, okay? You literally have issues. You have your priorities fucked up because it makes no sense on how you're... A black man died. A man died. A human being died by a cop. A white murderer. And y'all mad? Y'all want to talk about... The media wants to talk about people rioting in, in, in Target and them stealing from the Target. Now, should they have burned it down? I don't know. The girls was bugging. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about that. But, the, but it's okay. It's okay because at the end of the day, like, that soul that was lost could never come back. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what really should upset people more. You don't want riots? Stop killing black people. Like, it's simple math. Like, it's literally simple math. It's not a hard concept to understand. Like, and for, and for people who say that, like, oh, police brutality doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Police murderings exist, okay? People, police officers killing people exist. And first of all, police brutality does exist. Let me not say that. But police, yeah, you, you may be right with that when it comes to, oh, yeah, police brutality doesn't exist. Yeah, when they killed somebody, yeah, it's not police brutality no more. It's police murderings but what i wanted to really get out of this video and tell you guys is that afro latinos we need to stop being so passionate when we want to wear box braids or we want to you know uh say the n-word and claim blackness we need to start claiming blackness in times like this when we see an african-american man on the floor being killed and murdered by a white cop this is when it really matters for your voice to be heard and understood and if you're not doing that, then please stop claiming Afro-Latino just for convenience, okay? This is why the African-American community doesn't accept us because we only claim it for convenience. And as an Afro-Latino myself, it upsets me that my own community is quiet right now. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's really feeling as passionate as they are. But when they want to use the N-word, they have this whole forum, this whole list of reasons why they are Black. Where is that same energy when we need it the most? Not when you want to do something for convenience, but when it's inconvenient, you also need to claim it as well. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And I love you. I love us. And this we will overcome. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.